Hello friends, hopefully you are doing well. If this is your first time, welcome. And if you are a returning viewer, thank you for coming back. So I have been trying to turn to more topic based videos just to kind of try it on for size and see if anyone is interested in these kind of videos or if I'm good at them or if I enjoy them. So this is the second one that I am doing and it is about luxury shopping. I have seen those videos, I think we've all seen those videos maybe, where they're like five things not to do or five things to do or what not to do when luxury shopping or what to do when, when luxury shopping or how to luxury shop. And most of them I haven't loved. Um, I've watched a handful of them and some of them seem kind of pretentious. So I thought <clears throat> maybe I should do my own video about how to luxury shop. I'm not really sure what I'm gonna call it, but let's get started. So if you are a veteran luxury shopper, then you will have your own experiences. Um, I'm going to give some tips based on my experiences with luxury shopping, which is not extensive, but I've done my fair share. Tip number one is I say, don't be intimidated. You're a person, they're people, it's a building, it's got stuff in it, what? There's nothing to be intimidated about. And I think it's important to say that and think about it that way because it can easily be intimidating because it's a different kind of shopping experience. Now, I have not shopped at Hermes um, or Dior. My, <laughs> my luxury shopping experience is limited to Louis Vuitton and um, Gucci. Already I feel I'm, I'm not great at these videos. <laughs> because <laughs> I've got to keep my thoughts straight. Okay, my luxury experience is limited to Louis Vuitton and Gucci. So I can't speak to places like Hermes, which hearing about the shopping experience there completely turns me off. Um, just hearing about it. I, I know that it's not for me um, because I'm, you know, I don't, I don't need to beg anybody to buy something from them like that. I'm sure that that's for someone. Obviously it's for someone. It is just not for me, but using the experience I've had. Yes, shopping at Louis Vuitton is different. My first time there, um, I was, I was, I was kind of, my head was kind of, you know, spinning. There's not normally someone when we go to Nordstrom, Macy's, you know, Target, someone at the door to greet you or to open the door. And here in my local boutique, the door is almost always locked. Sometimes it's not, but lately there hasn't been a line, which is weird, I hadn't really thought about it. There hasn't been a line um, a whole lot this year, but sometimes there's been a, there's been a line in, in previous years. I think the very first time that I went, they had to unlock the door, they let me in. Of course, you're used to just going into a store and walking around and seeing what you see. But in this particular, you can't just walk around um, and see what you see. You have to have a, client advisor or sales associate that comes and shows you around and kind of stays with you. You feel kind of chaperoned, right? The whole time. You can't just browse. Now, that was my first time. Here lately, five, six, seven years later, there are times when they, and I don't know, you know what? I don't know if this is because I'm a frequent flyer. And so they're like, hey, yeah, someone will be with you in a moment. I feel like that's happened more recently, but usually they had you wait for someone who can help help you, who can walk around with you. So um, that can be intimidating. Crazy. You don't wanna feel like you're wasting someone's time, yet at the same time, if you're just there to browse, if you're just there to look around, then that's all you wanna do. So I guess that's tip number two, is don't feel obligated to buy something because someone is assigned to you. I sometimes struggle with that, but hopefully me saying this will help someone else out. Don't feel obligated. You don't owe them a purchase. And it's not, you know, that's on them that they've set up their format um, to that, that that's their business model to have someone walk around with you. That's not on you. So if you just want to come see things in person, then that's all you want to do. So that's all you should do. Feel okay to say, I'm going to come back. I'm going to think about this and I'll come back later if I want to purchase it. And I guess that's my tip number three is to sleep on it. Don't, don't, don't 
have knee jerk impulse purchases. I've done it. I've done it so that you don't have to do it. I can tell you it has always bit me in the butt. Every time I have purchased something on a whim, I pretty much have regretted it. <laughs> That's sad to say, but it is better to do your research, to go watch. Thank goodness we live in a time where people make videos about these bags and about their purchases and about their SLGs. If you like something, try it on. Don't be afraid to ask them to take it out. Try it on, see where it sits on you, see how you like it, and then sleep on it. If you, you know, go home, take a look at some videos, see what people are saying, see how it looks on different body types, someone's body type that's close to your body type, and if you still like it the next day, if you still like it the next week, great. You're gonna have a better chance of buying something that you'll like for a long time. But yeah, stay away from impulse purchases. They are, they're the devil. As far as how to dress, this is where I, I feel it's cringy that some of the videos say you should wear a certain thing or dress a certain way. <sighs> dress however you wanna dress. Should you go in there looking like a complete bum? Maybe not, but humans are humans. Shame on people for treating people how they look based on how they look. That's not the way it should be. I say be comfortable, dress in a way that makes you feel comfortable. That's, that's it, that's all there is. How do you feel comfortable going that day? That's how you should go, done. Do your research. Do your research, do your research, and then do your research. What do they say? Measure twice, cut once, measure that bad boy. Make sure it's the right bag for you. Especially, I mean, I know there are some people who just have, they got it to do, got the money to buy it and if they don't like it, whatever. But if you're like me and you really can't just throw your money away, which I have done because I didn't do my research, because I bought things on a whim, don't do it. So I already, I know I already said this, I had to come back. I thought about it some more and I'm like, yeah, people need to do their research. I wish I would have researched a couple of bags um, that come to mind right now that I can't think of the names, but okay. I'm off that soapbox. But one more time for the cheap seats, sleep on it. Okay, I'm done. And if you're new to a brand, if you're new to a fashion house, if you're new to luxury buying in general, I would say start small. Buy a small SLG. See if you click. See if this is right for you. Um, there are some brands I can tell from afar. I don't click with. Me and me and Louie got something going on. Uh, for some reason, we've got something going on. We, we're in a relationship, but now I'm about to try to break up, but we're in, we, we've got something. I don't have that same something with Gucci. I have a couple of pieces from Gucci. I like, I really, really like, um, what is it? The 1995 Horsebit bag. I don't know, I might be messing the name up. There's a bag that I really like. I have two bags and I've got a few SLGs. There's a card case I really like from Gucci. Actually, that's my number one favorite card case to carry is my Gucci one. But I bought a couple wallets that I haven't even used. I just, again, purchases that just went to waste. I'm gonna try to find a way to use them, but I don't love them. Um, I have a bag, a small bag that I bought from Gucci that I don't love. So yeah, you can you, you gotta see if you click with a brand. So I would say start small. If you know um, you vibe with something, then, then you're good. Um, like I said, I know I vibe with, with Louis. I don't own any Dior. So I wouldn't go straight to a large purchase. I don't own any Hermes. I'm not, um, I don't own, oh, I do own some Chanel. I'm not loving the small items I own from Chanel either. Right? That's the moral of the story. If you buy something small and you don't love it, then you don't have to go spending your money, throwing you know your money behind something you don't love. And you found out with something that was maybe three to $500 instead of something that was Three thousand to five thousand dollars. Am I missing anything? Let's see. What have I said? Don't be intimidated. Wear what makes you comfortable. Start small. Do your research. Do your research and do your research. Sleep on it and then sleep on it again. Um, 
What else? What else? What else? I don't know. Maybe that's a good place to end. Let me just look at my notes. I think I've covered everything. The last two things I will say is, um, oh, there was one. Okay. Don't feel pressured is another thing. Do not feel pressured to buy something in the moment. So that goes along with sleep on it. Don't get something, um, oh, what do you call it when they do the hot stamp? Don't hot stamp anything right away. Please go back a couple days later. So I don't know about Gucci. I don't even know if Gucci hot stamps, but in Louis Vuitton, if so, if your item has a um, luggage tag that hangs on it, they will offer to hot stamp that right there in the store. Sometimes they if they're not super busy. Or sometimes if they're busy, they'll say, you know, they can do it later, come back on Sundays. I know the one that's um, in my city likes to do their hot stamping on Sundays. But don't hot stamp when you first buy something because you've got a 30 day window to return that thing and you want to make sure you are certain. So please don't hot stamp anything right away unless you know that you know that you know that you know you love that thing and you're gonna keep it because once it's hot stamped, it's yours. You cannot take it back. You cannot return it. It is what it is. Okay, I keep thinking of things. Don't be afraid to return. I have a low tolerance for returning things. I don't, like I have return anxiety. I don't like to return things. I have to like build myself into it and talk myself into it. And sometimes I chicken out and I'll just have my husband take something to return it. I don't know why, I don't know why I have that anxiety. But I would say don't feel bad to return something that you don't love. I don't care how the person who's gonna accept your return acts. If you don't like it, if you don't love it, and you've got 30 days to return it, you've got 30 days to return it. Done. That's what, some people have like a high tolerance to return things and they'll return and return and return. Like I can't, I'm not that person, I can't do it. So it's a little bit easier if I find something wrong with the item. I don't have as much anxiety because I guess I feel like I have a, a justification, but sometimes when I'm just like, eh, I don't love it. I feel bad and I don't know why because I shouldn't feel bad. I should just, if I don't love it, I'm just going to return it. That's so. my advice to you. I suggest that you really decide, um, you know, go to wear that thing, go to use that thing within the time, within the window that you could return it if you go to wear it and you, you know, don't love it. I'm going to stop there. Um, this video was all over the place and that's because I'm not used to doing these kind of videos. I'm used to showing a bag. Um, I'm not used to just talking, but I want to try to do this. So I'm going to let this bit video be a mess and maybe next time I'll do better at it. All right. If you made it this far, thank you. Come back and see me. Bye.